So hi, I'd like to welcome you to our annual Title I meeting. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Gemma Montford. I'm one of the assistant principals here at Collins Intermediate and also your parent liaison for this campus. I would also like to introduce Mr. Scott Doring, our principal. I'd also like to introduce Ms. Daniela Nzura. She's our fifth grade science, um, one of our fifth grade science teachers, and she's going to be serving as our interpreter tonight. And I'd also like to introduce Dr. James, who is our parent family uh, liaison for, for the district and does a lot of hard work for our district and our students. So now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can go ahead and, and get going. So let's talk about today what is ESSA, which stands for Every Student Succeeds Act. ESSA is a bipartisan measure which was signed into law on 12-10, which was signed into law on 12-10-15. Previous versions of the law were no child left behind. It was reauthorized as our nation's long-standing commitment to equal opportunity for all of our students. The NCLB shined a light on where students were making progress and where they needed additional support, regardless of race, income, zip code, disability, home language, or background. What ESSA did was it expanded on the No Child Left Behind by putting in place that mandates that insisted that all students are educated with the goal of fully preparing them for the success in college and careers. And if you're a parent, if you would log in or log into the chat box and type your name so we can make sure to log your attendance. So let's talk about highlights of the ESSA. It upholds critical protections for America's disadvantaged and high need students. It requires that all students be taught to high academic standards and supports and grows local innovation. It ensures vital information is provided to educators, families, students, and communities. And there's an investment in high quality preschool. There's also accountability and action in the lowest performing schools. ESSA is part of a Title I Part A. It provides financial assistance to schools with high numbers of or percentage of children from low income families with the goal that all children meet challenging state academic standards. Federal funds are located based primarily on census poverty estimates and the cost of education in each state. Again, it's based on census, so it's really important if you have not filled out your census right now to go in and fill out the census because so much of our funding is based on what you fill in in your census. Schools in which children from low income families make up at least 40% of enrollment are eligible to use Title I funds to operate school-wide programs to serve all children in the school in order to raise the achievement of the lowest achieving students. And CISD is a Title I district. So all of our students um, benefit from the funding we receive from the Title I program. So let's talk about academic achievement. That is obviously one of our number one goals here in CISD. So let's talk about the overview of our goals. This is, um, so our academic goals are based on um, our STAR assessment. Our campus goals are that all student populations in grade five through six will meet or exceed the 65% requirement on STAR in all content areas. And in Collins and um, Intermediate, our students take in fifth grade, they take science, reading, and math. And in sixth grade, they take a math and reading test. So let's talk about um, the different levels of performance on the STAR. Master's grade level would indicate that students are expected to su succeed in the next grade level or course with little or no academic intervention. If students meet grade level, the performance in this category indicates that students have a high likelihood of success in the next grade or course, but still need some short-term targeted academic interventions. And those are things that we do during our Tiger Times, through our RTI teachers, during small group instruction, through targeted instruction. 
Students also have the ability to reach approaches grade level. In this category, if your student falls in that, it means that it indicates that students are likely to succeed in the next grade or course with targeted academic interventions. And then finally, this is where we're hoping students are and we work every day to keep them out of the did not meet grade level. And um, performance in this category indicates that students are unlikely to succeed in the next grade or course without significant ongoing academic intervention. So how is this accomplished? How do we do all these wonderful academic things on our campus? Part of it is through funding. In order to achieve academic success in schools, communities with high percentages of economically disadvantaged families is indicated by the determining factors we discussed earlier. Congress allocated funds through grants to support the mandates of the ESSA law that they passed. This funding, like everything else with ESSA, comes with specific regulations. Any LEA, such as a CISD with a Title I Part A allocation, exceeding $500,000 is required by state to set aside 1% of its Title I Part A allocation for PFE. Of that 1%, 10% may be reserved at the LEA for system-wide initiatives and administrative expenses related to PFE. Of the 1%, 90% must be allocated to the Title I schools in the LEA to implement school level PFE. Parents have the right to be involved in the decisions regarding how these funds will be used for PFE activities. And that's why we want parents involved and engaged. We wanna hear from you and we want you to be a part of your children's education. And that's why we have a, a have our policy and we also have our compact which is posted on our website for you to view and if you would like a copy of that we can send that home with you as well. So let's discuss our teacher qualifications. Parents have the right to request information regarding the, quali the qualifications of their teachers. Parents must follow school procedures for this request and if you have a question about your teacher's qualifications Feel free to contact um, myself or Mr. Doring to find out that information about your students' highly qualified teachers. Parents' right to know. Schools are required to notify parents that their student has been assigned or has been taught for four or more consecutive weeks by a teacher who does not meet applicable state certification requirements at the grade level and subject area in which the teacher has been assigned. So if your student was to be, um, be taught by a teacher that was not highly qualified, the district would notify you that that has happened. But again, should you have a question about your teacher's qualifications, please feel free to call us here at Collins Intermediate and ask for myself, Ms. Montfort, or Mr. Doring. So let's talk about some other important contacts here at Collins Intermediate. Um, we want you to be involved. We want you to be involved and feel like um, you can call us anytime. And these are kind of some of the important people that you can contact. We know you have contact a lot of times with your students' teachers, but we would love to hear from you. Our principal is Mr. Doring, Mr. Scott Doring. You met him earlier. And you also met me and Mrs. Montford. I'm one of the assistant principals and can assist you in any way. We also have Mrs. Bortz, another assistant principal, and Mr. Holcomb. Our sixth grade counselor this year is Ms. Patricia Daniels. Our fifth grade counselor is Ms. Rachel Bruce. Also another familiar face that a lot of you see a lot is Ms. Sanchez, who works our front desk reception area. Um, she is also bilingual and a wonderful resource um, should you need to call the office and have a question. And then also our PTO present, president, which is Ms. Symmetric Walker. You can also, if you need to contact your child's teachers, you can do that through Class Dojo, email, or you can call the school directly and we can make sure that the teacher will contact you back. So let's talk about the benefits of the parent engagement and uh, parent family engagement program. For students, this means higher grades and test scores. It means they're more likely to complete their homework. They're gonna have better attendance. They have fewer placements in special education, more positive attitudes, higher graduation rates, and greater enrollment in post-secondary ed, which all sounds wonderful and that's what we all want for all of our students here in CISD. 
for Collins Intermediate, there's direct results um, that Title I funds help benefit um, Collins Intermediate specifically. It means improved teacher morale, higher ratings of teachers by parents, more support from families, and ultimately higher student achievement. So when we look at our campus improvement plan, which you can find on the district website, and I wanna make sure you understand where that is, because that is the plan that we put in place to make sure that we have a plan, a roadmap, for how we're gonna reach this high academic standards that we've set and goals for our students. If you'll go to CISD.org, then click on Parents, followed by Required Posting, and then Campus and District Plans, if you would like to look for that campus improvement plan. We can make sure that's there. If you um, get to the website and are unsure where to go, again, please call us and we can help you find that campus improvement plan that is posted. We thank you so much for attending today. The most important thing we want you to know is that we want parents involved um, in their child's education. If you have questions, we would love to hear from you um, and answer any questions. Um, that you have. Our ultimate goal is to continue to build stronger relationships with you, our community, and an ultimate goal is to make just our students do better academically every year for their future success. Again, we thank you for participating today and this presentation will be posted on our website if you would like to review it again. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? If you have any questions and are not comfortable asking right now, again, you can email or call the school and we can answer those questions. Thank you for participating.